Hi, I'm Corey, and I'm going to paint this modified Exalted Sorcerer, slightly altered to match the aesthetic of the Infernal Master from Warhammer 40k. I'm going to be dipping my toes into some non-metallic metal highlighting in this video, beginning with the armor surface. I'm starting with a deeper navy blue shade and working my way up to a nearly white. Oh, and I guess I should probably just say now, um, everything that could go wrong in this video basically does, and it shows how I kind of recover from those mistakes. But hey, who doesn't like a good disaster movie? Let's speed up this base coating process. It is Zinch after all. I'll just use a little magic. Perfect. Next, I'll start building up the specular highlights. A big regret I had was doing this in big chunks, thinking I could go back after and smooth out the gradients. If I had done a more gradual buildup of highlights, it would have saved me time and looked better. Oh well, live and learn. As I go along, I gradually add more and more lighter blue to my paint mixture, and eventually I'll end up just leaving the smallest amount of white right where the highlight terminates. So full disclosure, I tried moving my camera um, to the right side of me, and I'm right-handed. didn't really occur to me that my uh, hand would be in the way, so... Sorry for my blurry knuckles. By the way, if you're like me and kind of new to non-metallic metal and you don't really know where all the highlights should go, um, just Google someone else's work and copy it if it's not obvious to you. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing. There's honor in it. There's no shame. Um, next here, I'm going to just go back with a little bit of blue glaze, uh, just because like I was saying before, I wasn't really happy with how chunky the gradients were. And I'm going to spend a whole bunch of time fussing over it and trying to make those look a little bit better. Now for the cloak. My goal is to have the highlights ending in an ice blue and the deepest recesses to be a royal purple. I'm using Warlord purple like I do in all of my videos, but every YouTuber needs a favorite paint and... Pale Sands was already taken. I know it's looking a little bit junky at this point, but I find if I go and actually sketch in all of the deepest recesses, when I eventually start to build up those highlights, it's a lot easier than going back and sketching them in after the fact and, you know, accidentally painting over previous work. It's just a lot easier to build up from the bottom to the top. Or something like this, at least. Finding the gradient 
from the mid-tones to the recesses to be a little bit on the chunky side so I'm just again grabbing a little bit of purple wash this time and I'm just smoothing those out a little bit so it doesn't look quite so painted in. So there's actually a second cloak that goes over top the initial cloak we just painted. Uh, I'm not going to show it for the most part just because it's really just the same thing. But I've decided to make all of the secondary fabric um, just a pink, um, highlighting up to kind of a fluorescent pink. I find it complements the purples quite nice. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. Sorry about the hair. All right, so time to dip into my first experiments here, really in earnest with gold non-metallic metal. Um, I'm basically using a painting kit from Scale 75. Once I'm done base coating with a combination of Sahara Yellow and Gobi Brown, I begin adding in the mid-tones of Sahara Yellow. Or at least I thought I was adding in the mid-tones. The most ochre color, turns out, should make up about 75% of your highlighting. And I applied this to maybe 50% at most. Which ended up moving most of the color to the extreme highlights. This ended up giving my efforts more of a sandstone effect than a golden one. Something I had to correct later, which I did correct, and I'll show you that, but to the overall detriment of the model. With the backpack out of the way as a test, I begin working on the character and the much more tiny filigree and ornamentation. Now, at this point, I still haven't learned my lesson and I'm looking at this ochre paint and I'm applying it and it looks like corn to me. It looks awful. So I end up just kind of holding back and not adding as much as I should, not really looking at the bigger picture. There's something to be said for starting in one spot of a model and working on all of it from base up to the topmost highlight um, so that you can really focus in on one spot and how it looks. I wanted to kind of go across the entire model and treat it like a big assembly line. This just wasn't a good idea because honestly it's harder that way. You don't save any time and if I had done it properly and focused on one little spot I would have noticed that, oh, once I add the brighter highlights, it all looks fine. 
Well, I guess I'll learn that for next time. Now the main problem area is up here. All of this going on up here is what's causing me the most physical discomfort. It's like a visceral reaction of discontent coming from this area. Now that the mid-tones are out of the way, I start moving up to the really bright yellows all the way up to almost white. And it's at this point that things really start to click into place. Yeah, there's a lot of places that aren't really refined and they're going to take a lot of work and glazing. But as soon as you start hitting those really high points, that non-metallic metal gold really starts to come together. And that kind of reinforces why you should stick to one spot at a time, because until you get to that point in the painting process, it really does look very, very unsatisfying. So I have a whole bunch of gold glazing ahead of me and that can take a long time. I think it's relaxing, but it does take a long time. So I decide to take a little bit of a break and start focusing on some of the smaller details. Um, I start with a uh, War Colors Green and I love the way they label their paints. It's just one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I start with a deeper five and move my way up to, I believe, a two for this. For all the uh, green gems, um, for the eyes, and for, I don't really know what it is on the hands. At first I thought his hands were flaming, with like green fell flame I was going to do it as, but then I looked at it closer and they looked very modeled onto him and rigid, so I thought, well, maybe they're just like flaming ornamentation. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just deciding to treat them as if they're kind of like ornamental emerald flames. One discovery that I made, and this shouldn't be a discovery, this seems like it'd be pretty obvious, but it's a discovery for me, is when I'm painting inorganic materials, um, like for example the robes, uh, I start with a deeper purple, like Warlord purple, and I work my way up to a, say, fluorescent purple or pink, um, and then up, I just keep adding white. When something is more organic, um, like tentacles, or in this case, I wanted his pauldron to kind of actually resemble the flesh of one of those pink horrors. Um, instead of just adding in white, I end up adding just a bit of white and yellow or a very bright yellow paint. And this kind of creates a more uh, organic and lively tone to it. The bottles are pretty straightforward to paint. I just paint the bottoms of them where the liquid would be, would be sloshing around with, say for this one, I do red. And then at the top of the liquid, I paint the rest of it black. And where the two meet, I just highlight. So in this case, I add a little bit of a brighter red to the top and I add a couple of bubbles going up. And then it's just a matter of finishing off the bottles by painting in the straps using some brown leather and highlighting them. Uh, you can also go a little extra step and put some sort of glossy clear coat over them to give them a shine. Or if you're trying to stay away from gloss in your model like I'm doing with this one, you can just paint in a little reflective white where the bottle would be reflecting. 
Since this is quickly turning into a how to recover from your mistakes video, I'll point out I keep adding washes at the end of the process, like on the pauldron and the green, and then going back and highlighting everything back up. The reason is, is I didn't think I'd need a wash because I was being so meticulous with my highlighting. I was wrong. Again, it doesn't uh, hurt to add a wash after your initial base coat, so lesson learned. The majority of the base is nothing special. I just kind of hit the tiles with um, whatever contrast paint looks tiley. And I'm going to be dry brushing it anyway, so I'm not super worried about it. There's a bunch of tentacles and little baby screamers bursting out of the ground. So I just start by base coating the tentacles with uh, just, well, more alert purple again. And I'm also going to be hitting part of these screamers with a darker contrast paint and then just wet blending that in to the uh, arithmetic blue contrast paint. Actually is pretty nice for a screamer effect. And if you noticed earlier, I was messing around with some red contrast paint I was going to use for the tentacles. But if you also noticed when I first tried applying it, it completely beat it up and uh, would not apply properly at all. I actually used the official Games Workshop primer on this, so I don't really know why it did that. But the other um, parts of the model, like the screamers, worked fine. But the uh, tentacles didn't. I guess I modeled them out of a two-part um, putty clay, I think it's called epoxy. So maybe that has something to do with it? I don't really know. Before I get to any dry brushing or anything though, I just take a little bit of thin down paint and I paint it into the tiles near where they're bursting out so that it kind of looks like there's a bit of an underground glow coming up through the tiles. Um, I use a little bit of white added to that to brighten up that glow effect a little bit, but then I just use a uh, regular blue wash uh, just to hit the tentacles with and some uh, key parts of the screamers there just to add a little bit of tonal variety. Once I'm done doing some touch-ups with Warlord Purple all over the tentacles to avoid tea staining from the wash, I start adding uh, yellowish white, uh, a little bit brighter than the Sahara yellow that we used earlier uh, to the purple, uh, to start building up those highlights. And from there I add more and more bright yellow and white um, to build up those highlights so it looks a little bit more organic. Uh, in contrast to the inorganic purple of the uh, clothing and cloak and scarf uh, that he otherwise wears. Once I'm done dry brushing the base with uh, Zandri dust with a little bit of white added to it, I realized I went way too hard on it and I ended up deleting a whole bunch of that uh, detail. So I just grabbed something called uh, Soft Tone uh, from Army Painter, which is kind of like Agrax Earthshade, but it's way more relaxed. And just use that for some minor touch-ups. You'll notice with some of these green highlights, I'm going very white with some of them. And the reason for that is immediately after I hit them with a green and yellow glaze. And that glaze goes over the white and it merges with the green and it kind of brings it all together into kind of a 
glowing evil green flame effect or at least i hope it does So this is kind of the embarrassing part. At this point, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that my gold doesn't really look gold. So what I do is I take some yellow wash, like a off the shelf one from Games Workshop, and I add a little bit of that mid tone to it. I get it really diluted into a slightly more opaque glaze. And I use that and brush it between the high tones and the mid tones in an attempt to blend everything together and create a seamless transition. It actually does work pretty well, but the downside is, is I lose a lot of that extreme contrast, which you want with non-metallic metal, and I end up deleting a lot of the really high highlights as well. So I still get the effect, but like you can see at the end of the staff here, some places don't look quite as good. And I'm probably going to go back at some point and wipe all that paint off and reapply it. There's other parts that look a lot better on the headdress, I guess you'd call it there. I can see that a whole bunch of the contrast has still been maintained and I still have some of those highlights. But I guess the lesson learned is just do it right from the start. Take your time. Do one section at a time. Slowly work your way up and, uh, you know, follow a guide from better painters than me <laughs> but no please subscribe the touch-ups with the blue actually goes quite a bit better just because um, I think one of the issues with the gold is my touch-up glaze uh, is just way too opaque so it deleted too much with the blue I just take essentially a blue wash straight and I use that on the transitions and I don't lose all of the same detail. Still doesn't look as good as if I had slowly worked my way up, but I'm a lot happier with the blue when I'm done with the model. And with that, we're done. Let's uh, check out some glamour shots. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Um, I really appreciate it. Takes probably more time to edit these videos than to actually paint the models in them, which I found a little bit surprising, but uh, it's a learning experience. Uh, if there's anything that you're interested in having me paint, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you're interested in. Um, I might do it, but it's also because leaving comments, I believe, creates like engagement for the algorithm. So, you know, just full transparency here. That's, you know, but I might paint it. I might, but, you know, leave a comment and do all that stuff as well. I still have no idea how to end a video.
Wait, is this still recording? Where's the off button? Oh, is it?